Hey, what's up, guys? It's Alex Louis, parttimemagic.com, uh, with your Solidity tutorial video for mappings. I've seen a lot of questions regarding mappings and a lot of confusion out there as to what they actually represent uh, in Ethereum, the Ethereum language Solidity. And what I'm going to cover today is just a summary of how mappings look visually how they work technically and then we'll look at the code so let's get started so visually a mapping can kind of look like this although this is the way it looks visually it's not meant to look in terms of how it looks in memory you can think of a mapping as a hash table but do not ingrain that in your head because it's not a hash table. So what happens with a mapping is you it really is not doesn't store every possible key value or any key values at all. But depending on the type for the key, that key value will represent a position in memory of where the value is stored for that for that value for the key because mappings have a key value pair but you can think of it as having every possible value for the type of the key so for example if you have a mapping of address to int or uint then you pretty much have every possible address available to you as a key and that's not to say that it's stored anywhere uh, and I'll get to that in a, in a minute. Okay, so you you have every possible value available to you as a key, depending on the type. So in this particular example, I'm using address, the address type. So every possible address available to me uh, is my key, and then that is mapped to. Uh, if I map it to a uint, then I have a uint value for that key. Now, in order for you to understand how it's actually stored, okay, we need to go back and review hash functions because that's what mapping does. It's basically a one-way hash function. And I'll explain to you why you can't iterate through it, okay? So what is a hash function? A hash function is any function that can be used to map data of arbitrary size to data of fixed size. So in our particular example, we are going from a mapping of any data type, right? So in, in our particular case, we have an address. And that address, think of that as a keys. And the address will get fed into something called a hash function. OK, so now we're kind of deviating away from the visual that I had before, which is a table. You can look at it as a table because you're still kind of mapping a key to a value, but you're not storing it anywhere unless you take action. So for example, if I want to set a address to a value, to an uint, okay, what's going to happen is my address will get hashed using the SHA SHA-3 algorithm that Ethereum uses and that will give me the location of where the value will be stored so because I'm feeding my key to a hash function I'm not storing it anywhere I'm actually hashing that key to a result and then that result will be where my value will be stored so you don't hash you don't store any results until you hash the actual key so the minute that you declare your mapping you have a mapping of a data type which could be a, an address a you went uh, any 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 preliminary primary data type value type um, and then that type when it's ready to either a get or do a set we hash it using sha3 and we get a result which will then point to us to our value so 
you you can you like I said you have to think of a mapping as a one way hash function where you're not exactly storing the values you're going to do it on demand where when you need a key you're going to hash it get the result and then that's where your value is stored that would be your key value pair so the key you get the key you hash it you get a result and then from that result that tells you where your value is stored now that is why you can't loop through a mapping because you don't necessarily you can't loop through a mapping unless you hash every possible representation of your key which is not feasible right you can't hash through 256 bit values uh, and have all possible all possibilities right so you you are it's imp it's not efficient for you to go through one key hash it then get the result next key hash it then get through the result because you're going to be doing this hash function forever so that's why the hash function the mapping is an on demand uh, data structure Meaning that when you need to get something, it's going to, on on that point where you get it, it's going to hash your key, get the result, and then get the value for that result, which is your memory space, your memory location. When you need to set something, it's going to hash the key at what you pass it in, get the result, and then get that value at that memory location and set it. Hence, you, like I said, you can't loop through this because then you it's it's pretty much random depending on the hash depending on what SHA-3 returns back right so if you do an address you know whatever 0001234 it's going to get hashed to a particular value not doesn't necessarily mean that 00001234 will get hashed to the next memory location uh that's adjacent to that because of the hash function okay so you can't it's not feasible and efficient to loop through and you can't it's almost you can't it's impossible because if you hash two adjacent addresses that that come right after each other one hash will go one way and then the other hash result will go the other way so you see if you look at the image here John Smith is hashed to hash number two and then Sandra D is also hashed to hash now this is a this is not a good example because what's happening here is you're having a collision between John Smith and Sandra D so what happened was you have John Smith gets hashed and that goes to value 2 and Sandra D is also getting hashed and that goes to value 2 now because uh, Solidity uses the SHA-3 there's almost a 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 percent chance of that happening of a collision happening so you're always gonna get a hash value that's going to be different from any other key value in your mapping okay so it's almost impossible okay so if we look at how it how it visually looks in reality is let's say we want to get a value at address 0, 0, 0, 0, 0001 so 0, 0, 0, 0001 is going to get fed into our sha3 hash function and the result is going to be a memory location where our value is stored. So let's say our value is stored and that memory location is 5. Okay, so 0001 will always get hashed to that result. So if I have 00002 and I hash that through the SHA-3, I'm not going to get uh, result plus 1. I'm actually going to get maybe result plus 1000. So they're not adjacent to each other. So like I said, you it's it's impossible to loop through a mapping because of this. It's you're you're talking about feeding your map key value into a one-way hash function. Okay, now let's let's look at the code. Okay, let's look at the code. So visually, let's um maybe this way we can look at this a bit better. Okay. Now let's say we have a struct. Okay, I'm going to create a struct called person, and that person is going to have a uint id bytes32 
name and bool is person. Now, and I'll explain to you why I'm going to use that bool is person uh, in a couple of minutes. Okay. Now, we want to map a address to my struct called person. So what, what's going to happen is now I have a mapping of every possible address that comes in. And when I do a get on that address, it's going to hash that value of the address and then get me the person for that address. Okay. And if you think about it in terms of functions and hashing, um, you're going to deviate away from that mindset of oh can I loop through a map you can't loop through a mapping because it's not it's not a data structure that it's that is sequ uh, everything is sequential you're you're having your address being hashed to one random location and one memory location and then any other address will be hashed to another memory location okay okay so now we're gonna write a get person function so if we write the get person function we can say get person address a view public returns uint bytes 32 and bool. Okay, so here, okay, sorry, this, uh, what, is what is this complaining about? Semicolon got our brace. Uh, P. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see what happens here. Oh, I'm missing a semicolon here. That's why. Okay. Now, what I want to do is I want to get a person. Okay. So I'm declaring a person reference. Okay. And I'm going to get my person at whatever key address they're coming in. Okay. And then I will return the person.id, the person.name, and person.isPerson. person. Okay. Now, why am I using that Boolean is person? So whenever you create a mapping, okay, the struct value in memory will have everything in default. So for example, any uints will be zero. Uh, any bytes will all be, I think they all be zero also. And any bool, this default value will be false. Okay, so when we write our set function, we will set is person to true to tell us that that particular address has been set with the person uh, values for that struct. Okay, so let's take a look here. Uh, if I if I create this, okay, and I want to get a particular person. So let's let's take a look at what's happening here. Okay, so if I copy this address and I paste it in here, okay, this will get passed in through A, and this is going to do the lookup. So how does it do the lookup? And this is the important part, okay? So it's going to take A, so I'll put the notes here. Number one, it's going to take the value of whatever is at A and hash it, okay? It's going to hash it using the SHA-3 SHA function, okay? Okay, and then two, once it hashes it, it will use that value as the location, okay, of where in memory our value is. So for example, right, we are taking this value as an address. It will get hashed using SHA-3. Okay, and let's say our result was something along the lines of um, memory location 0x0a. Okay, so 
whatever is at 0 x 0 a is going to be our p our, our person struct okay and that's what we're going to get back here in our person variable okay so three important steps to realize when you're accessing a mapping number one is take whatever is in the key right that's coming in the key and it's going to hash it using the SHA-3 okay once it hashes it it's going to produce a value and it's going to be an arbitrary value depending on what the calculation was okay for every one of these for, for the whole address okay so in my example I'm saying okay this hashes to memory location 0x0a which means that this is where I am getting my person struct okay and because I do that then I have person dot ID I can now point to the actual person dot ID and all that okay so you see now why you can't really loop through a mapping because if you loop through a mapping and you try and go through every address you'd have to hash the next address then hash again then hash again and these memory locations will not be the same so if I even if I have an address that's one plus this doesn't mean it's going to go into 0 x 0 B it may go to 0 x 0 F okay so like I said y your mapping is really a one-way hash function so when we do a get this is a get we are feeding our value through the hash function we get that location the memory location and then now we can get the values of the struct okay which is the value okay this is the value now I'm gonna stop this video and we're gonna create an, I'm gonna create another video on setting mappings okay and then deleting mappings mapping values okay so hope you enjoy this I hope this kind of enlightened you in terms of mappings and I'll see you in the next video